So in the last video, I talked about the different mechanisms behind recombination and generation in semiconductors. And in this video, I'm going to take a look at the first mechanism mentioned, that of using light. So if we've got a semiconductor material, slab of silicon, and we shine some light onto it from above, we're interested in seeing what happens. Like how, how do we how do we model this with differential equations? And we're just going to assume that the light is at a single frequency f. Well, we expect a certain amount of light is going to get reflected and a certain amount is going to get transmitted into the silicon. And let's say that the transmitted amount is just equal to I naught. Um, so that's that's the initial intensity of light that gets through to the silicon. And so let's say that this is the this is the z direction because typically we work in the x direction so we're interested in how the silicon varies uh, from side to side but this is we're shining light on the surface in this case. So what happens? Uh, well we expect that the total light uh, as a function of z is just equal to the initial intensity and then times this e to the minus alpha z. So where does where does this e to the alpha z come from? Well, we expect that if we treat the silicon as a bunch of layers, uh, the first layer, uh, we expect it to absorb an amount of light that's proportional to the total intensity of light. So just the more light you have, the more light you absorb. And that's described by the differential equation uh, di dz is just minus alpha, which is some coefficient that we don't know, uh, times i. And the solution to the differential equation is just this intensity uh, profile. So we also expect that the number of electron hole pairs generated, so the number of uh, electron hole pairs. Uh, is just proportional to the total number of photons. Because we know that the each photon, uh, if it interacts with a single electron, it's going to give it enough energy to jump from the valence band to the conduction band and leave behind a hole. That is assuming that the light does have enough energy to do that. So we're assuming that HF is bigger than the band gap, e.g. And this is the conduction band, this is the valence band. So then we expect the total generation, uh, the generation rate as a function of z, to just be the proportional to i naught. So we'll just say we've got this extra coefficient k times i naught uh, times e to the minus alpha z. Or if we just lump these into a single coefficient, let's call this g naught, then g as a function of z is just equal to g naught times e to the minus alpha z. And so if we're not interested in how the semiconductor behaves as a function of z, and we're interested in just how it behaves as a function of x, then we can just perform this integral uh, and we'll get g uh, independent of z basically so g will just be a constant uh, and we call that gl so if we if we perform this integral uh, we'll just get 1 over alpha uh, to, or sorry g not over alpha times 1 minus e to the alpha l or let's say e to the alpha d where d is just the depth of the semiconductor and so this is not a function of x. So this is just a constant uh, GL. And typically when we're doing these kinds of problems, the semiconductor might be eliminated, uh, illuminated from the side, in which case you do actually have to worry about this dependence. Uh, and you'd get uh, G of x instead is just equal to G naught times e to the minus alpha x. And so in that case, you'd have to just plug this into your differential equation for generation. But typically, uh, the generation is just assumed to be constant as a function of x. And this is why, because, because of the angle of illumination. So this is a complete way of describing uh, the 
the generation from light, these, these two equations here. So if we have the initial generation rate G naught or the total generation rate GL, uh, either one of those pieces of information will be sufficient to solve uh, a problem with in involving light generation. So in the next video, I'm going to talk about the thermal mechanisms of recombination and generation. And then after that, we're going to bring together everything. Uh, so recombination, generation, and current into a single equation that will let us actually solve these kinds of problems.